Marsha Martin, the heart healer, my newfound friend. Thank you so <laughs> much for being in this space on One Degree to Victory, sharing this space with myself and my listeners. Uh, we welcome you, and I am so excited to hear what you have to share with us today about living from a place of gratitude. And I am delighted to be here and to have found you. So let's do it. Okay, let's start. So before we get into this conversation about gratitude, I have a question that came to me this morning and it was posed in my spirit. And the question was the things that we think are problems. This was the question, I believe. And I'm, I'm going from, it was dark early this morning. What if the problems what if what we say are our problems are not are not problems? And I began to mull that over and I began to look up the, the etymology of the word problem. And what I found was it means the pro is before and then the blem and the, the bellows and all the different uh, amalgamations of that word and the different language bases, all the different language bases. And to lay something in front of or to throw. So throw before. And it was a term that was used um, to spur debate and thought. So the great thinkers, the great philosophers of that time, I you know propose a problem, I submit a problem. So that, that's where that word comes from. But, you know, and as I'm asking the question, I'm thinking it that word was not used to fix an existing external challenge. It was used to spur really thought process to get us to get that whoever that question was posed to to get society thinking about a deeper meaning. So I am thinking that what we consider problems, our our cyclical behavior, maybe are going back and forth. I, you know, people, why can't why can't I keep attracting the same person or the same thing keeps happening to me? Why can't I fix this problem? But they're looking at I believe what I believe is an external frustration or distraction to really distract your heart, your spirit, your soul, your metaphysical self from going deeper within, if, if that makes sense. And I don't know necessarily that it's designed to stop, but it is, it, you haven't, there's something unresolved there that either you've been trying to fix or you didn't know existed. There's a wound there and it's just, it's coming out and it's manifesting itself in, in these areas of challenge and adversity. So um, what do you think about that, that thought that went through my head and problems this morning? Well, I love the idea that it was a phys philosophical discussion. Mm. And I, you just gave me a brilliant idea because I used to, kind of stew in that space of, oh, what problem is this? And then the divine sort of led me away from calling it a problem and now it's a challenge. And, but you've given me new um, a new tool because if we can look at the thing that we may be calling a problem mm -hmm. as a philosophical puzzle to be solved, mm -hmm. we can say, hey, what did we throw out before we encountered this situation. Wow. What went before us that caused us to interact with this? And then that is a soft, gentle way to say, what beliefs am I holding on to? What limitations have I assigned to myself? Wow. What does my society, culture, family, whatever it may be, what are they believing that may not work for me any longer that is causing me to to attract these unwanted situations and people as a way to kind of get my attention to say, whoa, Marsha, <laughs> when you hold this belief, mm. you get X, Y, and Z, and you don't relate well to X, Y, and Z anymore. You've moved yourself out of that belief space, and now you need to go with QRS because they're more in alignment with, with who you are, and you'll find a sense of community and a sense of belonging with those situations and people where you won't with the, the others. And mm -hmm. you'll just constantly feel like an emery board running al along your skin. It's going to be a, a constant irritant. But yeah. if we can look at that and say, oh, 
I had to do something in order to attract this. Yeah. That's how this could come into my awareness. Yeah. If we can go from that gentler place instead of the, oh, what's wrong with me? It's easy to correct when we are not feeling foolish, stupid. Um, Inadequate. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm like, <laughs> what other great words have I assigned to myself? It is so much easier to solve the problem when we're just feeling like, ooh, this is an interesting puzzle, as opposed to, oh, this is an insurmountable mountain because I'm too stupid. Yeah. No one is too stupid. No one is too broken. No one has come into this life journey without the tools that they need in order to successfully complete it. Yeah. But it does mean that we must give up our limitations, yeah. that limiting belief that we're holding about ourselves, that limiting um, behavior that we may be participating in. Mm -hmm. Everything that is holding us stuck has to go mm -hmm. because it is not serving us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we must step into the space where we recognize, I already have everything I need. I just have to give myself permission to access it so I can remember it, use it effectively, interact with it successfully in a way that will allow what I want to come to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's such a different mind and heart that says, oh, I have everything I need. I'm already perfect, as opposed to, oh boy, you know, I got a long way to go. And thank God we got through this day. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. <laughs> it is. Don't start behind the starting line. Oh. Let yourself line up where you have a chance to win at, at life. Yes, yes. And I, that takes us right into our conversation on gratitude. Okay. When yeah. we live from that space and we begin to see that, that outward manifestation in a philosophical, in a more spiritual, a more aligned way with the spiritual aspects of things, spiritual, the divine, when we begin to live from that space, now, okay, what, what's going on internally? How do we then turn those when we begin to say, I, well, let me ask it this way. How in those moments, how does gratitude help shape those moments? And for those of us, maybe we can start even at the beginning to maybe define what gratitude is, maybe for our newer listeners who have never who can't even begin to take the first step of saying, you know, all they can say, I have nothing to be grateful for. I'm, I'm, I'm here, you know, like you said, we'll see what tomorrow brings. I see nothing grateful. How do they begin to move into the gratitude space? Such a great question because I fell so hard off the, the cliff of, pretend gratitude and it was not a happy landing so <laughs> I, I am delighted to share what i have learned the hard way so you don't have to so when gratitude was presented to me it seemed like oh my gosh this is going to answer every question i've ever had and i really didn't solve the problem of hey i'm not grateful for where i am mm. so I'm just a liar. Instead, I went in, I mean, I was like the queen of fake gratitude. Oh, I'm so grateful for everything. And I'm seething inside. Mm. I'm like, you know, look at my purse. Oh, I'm so grateful for $20 when I'm trying to buy $100 worth of groceries. Mm. I am so angry that there exists this big gap. But I have told myself these words I am grateful yeah. are going to solve my problem. Yeah. So I'm applying a Band-Aid without understanding the principle. Mm -hmm. So the principle is not, I am grateful for things that are horrible. You're not. Stop lying. It's not going to work. You're going to share that venom with everybody and everything that you interact with, and you will attract to you more things that feel horrible. So what you can do and what you, what gratitude practice should be is finding anything for which you can express sincere gratitude, not fake, 
not stretching it, oh, maybe in a hundred years. No. What can you in this moment truly feel gratitude for? If you have a family, perhaps you can be grateful that you have this family that loves you. If they don't love you, if they treat you badly, don't be grateful for them. They're not nice. <laughs> they are wonderful teachers, but they may not be lovely supports. Yeah. So you don't have to be grateful for them. Yeah. If you don't have enough food, do not try to be grateful for food that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Be grateful. You know, I am grateful. I would like more, but I can be grateful for this one thing that I do have. Yeah. You must be truthful, but you do have to find things in your life and they will they do exist mm -hmm. even in the darkest of the dark. Yes. There is something that you can say, I am truly grateful for this. If it is if you are healthy, I am grateful for my health. If you have to work three jobs, okay, nobody is going to be grateful. I'm so happy that I have to work three jobs in order to keep a roof over my family's head. Mm -hmm. But you can say, I am grateful I've been able to find this much employment. I want a better job that will allow me to make even more and yet work normal hours, but I am grateful for this employment. Begin where you are. Find the thing that did, does work, whatever that looks like. There were times when I had to just go outside and say, I'm grateful for the flowers. Mm -hmm. Everything was so upside down yeah. and such a mess. I couldn't even unravel what parts of it I was grateful for. But I love the flowers. So I, I'm so grateful for these flowers. I love the, the smell. I love the beauty. I am so grateful for the abundance of flowers. It took me out of the mess that I had created of my own life and put me into a place where I could see something that was working and was abundant and spoke to my heart mm -hmm. and brought me a sense of joy. And yeah. then that opened up the pathway for me to find that within my own life. Yes. Yeah, I've been to, I think I started the same way with the gratitude list find anything, find five things you can be grateful for, for the warm cup of coffee. But the whole time I'm thinking I can get a, a dollar coffee, you know, that's, that's nothing, you know, like I have a whole shelf full of coffee. That's not a, but I listed it anyway, you know, and then I got to the point of this is not working for me. And it, it's like, everything was upside down in my world at the time. And mine was, my gratefulness was I'm alive. It literally took me from, I, and it wasn't the next day. It was, thank you that that moment passed. Thank you, God, that that moment, I was grateful for every moment because my life was in such turmoil. And so just to the person who's listening uh, to this conversation, I want to let them know, be grateful that the moment past if you have to start there because i'm here now that was a year and a half ago you know and i here i am now not ever one degree of victory wasn't in my mind at that time i held on to being alive from moment to moment and here i am yay with dr marcia Martin talking about gratitude living with gratitude so just to that person who is you know on on the edge and thinking things won't get better. There are two women here telling you, start from your truth. Doesn't and matter what I, social media is saying, <laughs> doesn't matter all the little, you know, the, the, that life hack, the life hack begins in your heart. If you want a better life, it begins in your heart. And we guarantee you that it gets better. Yes. We yes. are not asking you to participate in a practice that will hold you in the same place where you are now. Mm -mm. And that's the other thing to remember, and I'm so glad you brought that up. You can't go forward five years. Well, no. I'll be grateful when I, no. if I'm, you know, just, you've only got this moment. This is the only moment you can truly be available for. Oh. And so you must find something in this moment, not in the past and not in the future you can only make change and be available in this little tiny space so this is the only moment you have to get through 
And if you can feel good about something, and I hope it's you, you really should love you because you are an incredible yes. being. Yes. But if you're not there yet, I get it. I was so far from that that it was like, oh, no, that's <laughs> no. <laughs> so anything that you can find that feels good to you, that feels true, that brings that clarion call mm -hmm. of, yes, this works for me. Okay. And please do not repost or feel that you need to identify with that horrible thing that is going around social media. Well, I thought that my life was bad because I didn't have any shoes. And then I saw the person with no feet. Oh, that one. Yes. Oh, that is such a guilt, blame, shame, knock you down kind of post. I hope you have shoes. And if you don't, it's okay to feel badly that you don't have shoes. Right. Don't go there. Go to what you do have. What do you have that can make you feel good for this moment? Because if you can find good, and even if you can't get to good, if you can just find okay mm -hmm. in this moment and hold that hold for it. as many moments as possible, you begin drawing to yourself more situations that feel okay, then good, then better, yes. then even more exciting until you get to the space where you can take that breath and you say, this is exactly what I wanted. This is perfect. Yes, for me. Is that principle number one? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think the other thing is, hey, it's not going to come overnight. Yes. If you are looking for an overnight fix, I can't help you. <laughs> it's not... It is one little tiny incremental step at a time. Yes. And if you will continue to commit to taking that little step and finding something to celebrate in each moment. Yes. Yes. You will suddenly wake up and say, look how far I've come. Look at all of the improvements. I wasn't even paying attention. Yes. And all of these improvements have happened for me. It is you giving permission for your life to get better. And as the only person that is with yourself 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you are the creator and the controller of your life. Yes. If you say, no, I don't want things to get better, they will not. But on the other side, the minute you say, yes, I'm open to better things, I'm open to receiving goodness and that which I need, I am open to living a life that feels good to my heart, as long as you stay in that space, you will be uh, gifting yourself the possibility of those circumstances. And I say possibility because you cannot run in circles and still attract what you want. Mm. You must keep re-honoring yourself. What do I want? What feels good to me? What can I find right now to focus upon that lets me feel good? Mm -hmm. You must continuously be reinforcing and holding that space of good in order for good to make its way to you because it's not instantaneous. What, so, do, what do you mean by running in circles? I was just going to say, so when we do the, I feel good. Oh, I feel horrible. I mm -hmm. feel good. Oh, things are bad. I feel good. Oh, I wish they would get better. You're creating, you're just driving yeah. continual U-turns. Okay. Nothing can go forward. So if you want to stay on the everything is bad road, stay on everything is bad road. It will lead you to the, the end of a cliff and you'll either fall mm -hmm. off or turn around. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing happening to you that is not capable of leading you to a greater place. So be where you are. If you can't find anything, you don't want to find anything, you just want to be miserable, be miserable. Just go all in with your misery. Be miserable until you're done with it. Mm -hmm. It's either, You're either going to fall off that cliff, and I, I did both. I fell off the cliff and decided, okay, well, this really wasn't what I wanted. Right. I think I need to make a different choice. But let yourself be complete with whatever it is. 
if you're not done feeling sorry for yourself, just keep going. It's not going to get you in a place that feels better. But if you're ready, go all in on finding those things that feel good, that are genuine, mm -hmm. and then hold yourself on that path. Every yeah. time you want to go over into, oh, but it's not here yet, oh, yank yourself right back. It will be here for me if I continue to focus on what's right, what feels good, what brings me joy, and all of the ways in which I am seeing improvement. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed, you will reach that happy, glorious place that you have wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you say, in other words, so what I hear you saying is pick a lane. <laughs> Absolutely. Stay in a lane. Pick a lane and then stay in your lane. But you are better off being in one lane completely than you are mixing it up. Okay. And, you know, Jesus said to us, you, either hot or cold, mm. because if you're lukewarm, I spew you out of my mouth. Make a decision and stick to it because then you will make progress in that direction. And all progress is good because either it leads you to the end of the road, dead end, you can't go any further on the misery train, or it leads you to the wide open expanse of, gosh, look at all these possibilities. Yeah. So either way will lead you eventually to the place where you say, okay, I got to do something different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you say, I don't want... So here's, here's my thought on the misery train or the going back. Any, any, we can call it double-mindedness. But when, you, when we're coming into gratitude, when we're beginning to practice the gratitude, and you said, we're go I'm going to be grateful for those moments. I'm going to be grateful for the flowers. I'm, I'm going to be grateful for my kids, you know, that we're, we're here and that there's a chance always, always the possibility, like you said, to move forward. There's always the possibility to be okay and to be better. What if, as women, because our hearts, God bless us, are so full and the obligations and responsibilities and overwhelm. After we've said our gratitude and then does that overwhelm, does the need for us, because there have been times I needed to, um, I had a conversation with a girlfriend of mine, so I just had to go literally into the closet and close the door and cry because I did not want my kids to see me that way. Even though I know I want better, I have. The, the will and the, the desire to be in this grateful moment. But, you know, sometimes there's sometimes I was just standing at the kitchen sink and turned around and it just, woof, it was just an overwhelm. And then I, I so then this is a double-sided question. So there's that one. And then there's the, the scripture that says, God bottles our tears, right? He bottles our tears. And people tell you, it's going to be okay. Wipe your eyes. This is the last day you're going to cry. I, what's that word? Deplored that statement in, in my time. I did because I couldn't stop crying. I could not stop crying. I would tell the Lord, thank you that you're holding me in this moment in tears, right? That was my, but I could not stop crying. Does that negate? the gratefulness does it does that negate the gratefulness and i'm asking for other women i know but i want to hear your answer and what do you say to those women who have taken such that heart i'm not going to cry anymore but they need the the cathartic release of tears because i feel like shoot if you don't cry you don't have no tears bottled up for your harvest that's coming soon you know he will use those tears so that i would like your opinion on living when, you're, when we're going into those first phases of gratitude, having coming off of this, our trauma related or our risk. My cat's coming out of the drawer. Go ahead. <laughs> Literally pushing the drawer open from the inside. <laughs> and we're talking about the supernatural. What is she Hey, <laughs> gotta say, come on out. Why would we ask somebody to stop crying? Why are we so insistent that their, their show of grief or their release of pain or their letting go of what has been crippling them from the inside. Why would we say to someone, this is wrong? I love that you said, God, thank you for holding me while I cry. Yes. There is absolutely no reason to let 
emotions, mm. raw emotions eat you up when you can release them through the gift of tears. Yes. If you are crying because you have experienced an incredible hurt and the crying helps you re instead of internalizing the hurt and letting it eat away at you until it causes some horrible disease that you would then have to recover from, if the tears allow you to release it so that it can be transmuted through the love of the divine, then cry. It, cry. <laughs> Let it out. Let yourself say, this, this Absolutely. thing that I am experiencing is so painful. I am so destroyed by this experience. Absolutely. Acknowledge the truth. I think too often we are told to lie. Lie to ourselves, lie to the world, lie about, lie to our children, yes. which sometimes we need to do because they don't have the emotional or intellectual right. capacity to, to process. Right. But we are always, and especially as women, oh, you know, put a smile on your face. Lie about how you are feeling. Mm. It's, a, it's again, that inaccurate mm. gratitude practice. Is a smile better for you? Is laughter better for you? Is joy better for you than grief? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if it's fake, it is not serving you. Mm -hmm. If you are in a period where you are grieving for whatever reason, you need to allow yourself to express that. If it isn't expressed outwardly, it will eat away at you internally. Okay. It's not going to just disappear because you hope so. It <laughs> needs to be processed. So if your process is, I need to cry this out so that I can empty and then open myself to refill with love from the divine, yes. do it. Yes, absolutely. Create room, but just make sure that you refill. Yes. I call it Holy Spirit light of love. That refill is it. Refill with that love so that you're not just keeping an empty space because the yes. empty space will be filled with whatever it is you know best. Yes. So if you are grieving, you know grief best at that time. So you want to release the grief, fill with love, find something that feels good that you can be grateful for as long as you are telling the truth. Yes, to yourself. Right. <laughs> if you need to paint a happy smile on your face because you don't want to deal with all the questions when you go out your door, that's okay too. As long as, again, you are telling yourself the truth. I'm putting this smile on and going to go out there and look like I've got my act together because it's easier than navigating through all of the busybodies that want to know why I'm not okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what works for you? Mm -hmm. Does it work for you to go out and show that you're miserable because you need support that can be found from other human beings? If so, do that, but make sure that you are not walking into the lion's den where they are just waiting for you to show a weakness so they can rip you apart. My goodness. Make be, it plain, Dr. Martin. <laughs> yeah, be clear, clear about who you are interacting with. Yes. And if you don't trust them, don't show them a weakness. You can show the divine a weakness. God, I need your help right now. I am struggling so hard. Angels, come minister to me. Please bring me someone in the physical form yes. that I can be honest with who mm -hmm. will not respond to me with criticism or cruelty or take this information to use against me later. Know who you're dealing with. Not everybody needs to know what's going on. That's, but yeah. be honest with yourself and allow whatever needs to come out to come forth from you so that you can go to the next place. It's always about moving forward. It's never about how we move forward. It's just always staying on the journey of growth and of expansion. But your way and my way may look completely different and that's okay. Yeah, that's what I want uh, women to realize. Well, that's what I had to realize is, I, and I mean, as long as you are, what, what I found was when I, and I'm not saying that I have arrived. I'm not saying I have it all you know, together or figured out. But at each progression for me, when I recognize the victory in a certain part of life for me, 
um, I, you know, the little fiery dart tried to come in and say the guilt and the blame. Well, had you done this earlier, had you kept going and, and had you found this sooner, had you not been, you know, maybe you could be further along. These are the thoughts. These are those fiery darts that come in and try to paralyze you, try to, try to rip you apart and negate all of the progress that you've made. And I found myself for every win or victory or every progression that I would make, I would have, I would have those thoughts. And so I found myself um, wanting to compare, that would get me to comparing myself to, oh, she's further ahead. Well, they did it that way. And that, and that yeah, I began to let go of that and to move uh, once again, in my own space, in what gratitude is for me in my own space, in my own lane, and then again, at my own pace. I There is nothing wrong. I figured out that there, because you don't know, you're in new territory. And so someone comes along and says, try this, try that. And as long, like you said, as long as you're not, you know, emptying your pockets, be aware, there are charlatans, there are just be aware um, and then don't jump into things. And that's where the own pace comes in. I don't need it to look, and I have lots of self-confidence and like a lot. So when what happened to me, when I went through my trauma, I'm telling you it wiped me out. And this is coming from someone who has achieved everything that I've wanted to. So when you've done that and then it just, I lit for lack of a better, it just like a tornado. So I was trying to build what I had previously quickly. And I was running here and running there, still in the space of gratitude. But I was when I got even even in my even in my I know that I'm progressing, I began to compare. That's where the comparison came in. It's almost like, okay, so we can't get her with the doubt, right? Because we know she knows she's capable. So we can't get her with that. What if we get her with the comparison? You know, then I, then that's when the comparison started, uh, started to come in. And I realized that, you know what, I'm going to have to not, I'm going to have to put blinders on. I'm going to have to focus in my lane. I'm going to have to focus on, and then I'm going to focus in my lane, not go so fast and oh my gosh, slow down. Those were my three big and I, I'm still working on the slow down part. <laughs> and, but you know what? Those when you when you I think at every level, Dr. Martin, I think that every level you have the opportunity to fall out of a gratitude. Is that right? Because oh, absolutely. Okay. And okay. let's again let us be honest about what we are attempting. We are saying yes. I am here to expand and grow. Let's not be foolish and believe that growth is always painless or mm. always easy or always uh, attainable without additional knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so let's take ourselves out of the, well, I would have been further along. Hey, mm. if, you knew, if you knew better, <laughs> you would have done better. So just put a period on the end of that. Okay. I actually had to look at my life because I had really gotten in that, oh, I can't believe I wasted all this time, blah, blah, yes. blah. I finally had to look at my life and say, okay, you don't get to take the knowledge you have today and critique what you knew yesterday. Absolutely. With honesty, Absolutely. go back and look at what you were able to accomplish with what you knew. Mm. Can you be proud of what you did with what you knew absolutely and if you moved a millimeter forward you need to be proud absolutely. if you stayed in place and didn't go backward you still need to be proud yeah yeah if you went backward found that you didn't like it and started going forward you need to be proud you didn't have all of this information you might not have had a support system you didn't have the maturity the awareness, the growth that you have today. So you were limited 
to what was available and you still <clears throat> did it. So Absolutely. it's amazing. But what you're really saying is, thank God you have the self-confidence. So mo many of us do not. <laughs> but what you're really saying is self-love. Mm -hmm. Am I loving myself as I am? Well, since I can't be anything other than this person in this moment, I need to love me. I need to say, oh, I love myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love me just as I am. Just as you are. Give yourself that little Absolutely. hug and say, wherever I am, whoever I am, whatever I may be doing, I'm going to love myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find something about me that feels good mm -hmm. that I can say, you go, you, I am so proud of you. Absolutely. Because when you do that, you then automatically open the door and make it easy for yourself to find more things to feel good about. Absolutely. So I used to be in the dark with a light switch next to my hand saying, I don't deserve to turn on that light switch. I need to be in this dark place because 6,000 years ago, I don't think I was nice to Mary. <laughs> that may be true, but sitting in the dark today is not making up for the fact that you walked by Mary without saying hello. Right. <laughs> Just the fact that you're here, that you haven't given up, that you're still trying, that you're out looking for answers, that you are being the best you that you know how to be means that you deserve your love. Exactly. You deserve your appreciation and gratitude. Is it anywhere along the way you could have said, I give up, this is too hard, mm -hmm. I don't want to do it, I don't like it, I don't uh, need to participate in that? And that would be absolutely true. It is a choice, but because you made the choice to keep going, you need to be loved and honored for that. For that, exactly. Do you have, I know earlier we spoke on, have we covered the three principles of gratitude? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's just so much. There that, is. Uh, gosh. I we think, had them all numbered out. And I'm like, yeah, that's wonderful, but wow. Have we covered the three principles of living? I think we just need to know the most important person in your life. And as mothers, we love to say, my children are my most important being. And yes, your children are incredibly important. But this is the most important relationship you will ever have. Yes. And it identifies for your children and for the people that you are wanting to call into your life, how you are going to be treated what value you take place upon you and remember those children that you love so much are listening modeling creating lives that are based upon what they have seen from you wow and i remember not being very good about wow. being a model i was a great mouth hmm. my children heard you are the most amazing beings in the world you're perfect Oh my gosh, nobody is as wonderful as you. You can do anything. They heard that. Mm -hmm. They saw me say to myself, well, that was stupid. Gosh, you're such an idiot. Oh, I don't, I just can't believe you made that mistake. And my grown daughter said to me, I, I, I said something like that, too, which is unusual now. That used to be the only dialogue I had with myself. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to do something and I was like, oh, that was stupid. And my daughter said, mom, I have heard you say that all my life and I'm tired of it. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, what? <laughs> that you have told me I am, could do anything and oh. I'm perfect and I'm the best and you have always criticized yourself. I'm just not going to listen to this. Oh, isn't that, oh, wow. Like, whoa, baby, school. Yeah. I like, you are so right. Okay. What I, I made a mistake. I wish I had done something different, but that doesn't diminish who I am. Yeah. You are brilliant. You are perfect as you are, and nothing can change that. Yes. You can think things that are not acceptable. You can do things that are not appropriate. 
you can make choices that are really going to screw up your life, mm -hmm. but you are still perfect. And the divine will never stop seeing you as perfect. You've just stopped seeing yourself as you truly are. Absolutely. So my greatest advice is let go of every way in which you want to criticize yourself, every way in which you say you don't measure up, and begin honoring yourself by saying, I'm perfect. I am perfect. The situation is perfect. Everybody around me is perfect. You are going to grow into the place where that is your truth because it's going to feel so uncomfortable mm -hmm. if you are telling yourself, I am perfect, or whatever synonym for perfect you want to use. I am perfect. If it doesn't feel right, if it grates on your nerves, you're going to make the, the little changes that need to be made. So you can say that and say, hmm. yeah, that feels good. Yes. I am perfect. I am perfect. <laughs> And it will be the, to shake the dirt. What do they say? Uh, get that dirt off your shoulder. Shake that dust off your shoulder. Yes. Yeah, heck yeah, baby. Uh, <laughs> and, and it will be the catalyst that will continue to help you grow because you want to be perfect in the next moment. So just be in this moment. Find what feels good to you. Honor yourself by recognizing I am perfect. And if that's not sitting well with you, do what it, you need in order to make that your truth. That moment, right. And that's going to open the doors for growth because growth is so much easier when we allow ourselves to say, I'm perfect. I have the intellect that I need. I have the skill set that I need. I have the training that I need. Whatever it is, I already have this. Or if I don't have it, I'm open to receiving it. I can go out and find where it is yeah. and welcome it because. I'm perfect. I'm going to be able to do this. Start from level ground. There's no reason to start from the pit. Mm -hmm. And if you are in a pit right now, use the I am perfect to help yourself get to level ground. I am perfect is like building footholds into the mountain that you want to climb. Mm -hmm. It keeps reminding you, you are strong. You are intelligent. Mm -hmm. You do have what you need. It gives you the confidence to go forward. And it is very self-loving. Yeah. It's hard to say, I am perfect, and then say, I really hate myself. Oh. They just, <laughs> those two don't really line up. You're like, I am perfect. Oh, yeah, you know, I do like myself. I do can be appreciative of how far I've gotten and the growth that I have experienced and all that I have learned. I can honor myself with grace instead of criticism. Absolutely. Absolutely. I lost my voice. Dr. Marsha Martin, I am so grateful that our paths cross. I'm grateful that I will be um, in your presence one day soon. <laughs> We're going to have a party. And we have that city in common. <laughs> we are going to celebrate. And, you know, and that, that's the other thing. The angels have really been on me about celebration. Life should not be work, 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 work. Life should be celebration. And so anytime that you have a moment of joy, celebrate that moment of joy. And when you are making your plans and you decide, okay, this is my new goal. Don't wait until you achieve that goal for your celebration. If you instead say, this is my new goal and you make plans to achieve that goal, if you celebrate the moment you take any action toward that goal, you will have an easier time toward the middle when you're like, oh, golly day, it's a long way to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to victory. And you will not want to give up when you are at that, well, it's good enough point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Celebrate, oh my gosh, I'm actually doing this. Yes. That's going to create momentum. Yes. We can make our plans. We can get excited. But if we don't take that first action step, nothing happens. So celebrate in the beginning when you have honored yourself by taking that action step and then find new reasons to celebrate throughout the journey. Every new action step, new celebration. Every new milestone, an additional celebration. 
be as young children are. They are not waiting until they get to some imaginary place in order to be happy. They are shrieking with joy at the butterfly. Yes. They are jumping up and down when they, yes. you know, the thing at the playground where you can speak in one end and the person on the other side of the playground can hear you. Oh my gosh, watch their face when they discover that they can actually hear somebody that is not next to them. Yes. Be like little children. Get excited about everything that you are learning. The novelty of discovery instead of, oh, I got to go to work. Mm -hmm. What can you find to celebrate about work? Yes. And if you can't find anything, start looking for another job. <laughs> it's not the right job <laughs> for you. Absolutely. I want to read something when you said celebrate. It's almost like a... Um, confirmation because and i'm looking for it uh as you were speaking so so here's the here well that is what june is all about for me for for one degree to victory it's all about um celebrating and uh, what is it ecclesiastes it says he said i find nothing than to toil under the sun but for a man to celebrate his work, celebrate his work in every moment that you can. It's just like you said, if you cannot find joy in your work, then you might want to find something else, but it is good. It is a good thing to celebrate. But here is um, the celebration for my, for my birth month, for, for next month. You kept track of my every toss and turn through the sleepless night and each tear entered in your ledger. God, you've done everything you promised. This is from the Message Bible, by the way. And I thank you with all my heart. There's that gratitude. You pulled me from the brink of death, my feet from the cliff edge of doom. That's you pulling back and you're, and you're moving forward, you're making plans. And now I stroll at leisure with God in the sunlit fields of life. That is my celebration scripture for next one. That is my theme scripture for next month and that is how i choose to celebrate my and i call it it's, it's my natural birth but it's also the rebirth of my spirit after that crush so the, july i i didn't think i was going to make it to that next see that next birthday but ever since then and i admonish the ladies that are listening to hear you when you say that because ever since then ever since i've been pulled back from that brink and i started this new path i have celebrated not just my not just my july birthday not the, that chronological birthday but that reawakening that celebration of life this month that that particular month july just happens to be the culmination month right of all good things but <laughs> Wow. Like, I celebrate the little milestones, you know, every time I just, when I think it's a good decision, just like you said, what works for me is a celebration. Hey, look, one degree to victory is out. That in and of itself, it's been a year, is a celebration huge. for me, you know? Oh my God. And goodness. it is huge. And I, I, they are making sure that I share. Challenge does not mean you are doing something wrong. Absolutely. So, Again, please let's let us be clear absolutely. yes you can be walking in the sunshine with the divine and then crash oh absolutely. my gosh the absolutely. world has exploded absolutely this does not mean that you are bad have done something wrong no. were egotistical or no. ha deserve to be punished for some reason no. it is simply an indicator that you have grown beyond the circumstances that you are currently allowing in your life and you are being challenged to expand and in, include Absolutely. more and oftentimes when we are in the sunshine we don't like to be pushed forward mm -hmm. no and then we might be a little resistant no and and so we can get a shake up as a way to encourage us to continue the and we growth. keep walking Yes, and walk with him absolutely, and that is, um, that is exactly it. I, you know, you can't we we find, whether whether we began and our life is 
a constant parade of turmoil or challenges or adversity, you have to believe in order for you to come out, you must believe that there is a way forward and that he is with you at all times. Even when he's leading you and it, it looks like he's seemingly leading you into the abyss. And I, I tell you, I, I felt like it was the mama eagle kicking the baby out of the nest. That's the challenge. But right there with you at all times, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but you must grow. And in order for you to grow, you've got, you have to be challenged. You have to be challenged. And so I look and at that. Let's remember sometimes the only way through, it, the only way forward is through. Because yes. what you learn from walking through the fire or whatever the challenge is, what you learn is absolutely essential to your life purpose. Yes. So you could not achieve the, the crowning victory that you, that will be give so much meaning to your life if you had refused to walk through the fire. So you are not bad. You are not being punished. You Absolutely. have not made so many mistakes that God has forgotten that you exist. You are merely expanding into your greatest version of yourself. And sometimes it can be painful. And I'm, I wish I've had this conversation with Mother, Father, God many times. Is there a way that people can, I don't like to see them hurting my little chickies, God. What, is there a way that, that they can avoid the pain? That this can pass. Mm. Sometimes, yes, we are in resistance. Other times that holds within it the seeds of such magnificence that if you knew in advance, what you were going to gain, you would choose it anyway. Absolutely. And the, kind of like childbirth, right? The pain fades and you don't really remember, oh, I spent time in labor. You remember, I have this magical, beautiful being that is going to be part of my life. Absolutely. And I am so honored to be able to have this. Absolutely. And that's what living from a place of gratitude for me has become, even with the challenges. Um, and the adversity that I went through, it is, wow, thank you, God, for this. I, you know, thank you for trusting me, for really believing in me, because he was with you, and he knows that you can make it. He put what he puts no more on us than we can bear. He takes us through those challenges. You got it. Even if we feel like we want to give up, when we feel like we want to give up, when we are holding on to that anchor from within, when we're holding on to those moments of gratitude, living in that place consistently for me has been a breath of fresh air. If I can get, oh, it's, it's, yes. it's, it is the ultimate exhale. And yes. I know I've been told you're so lackadaisical about things. It's not lackadaisical. <laughs> no, you're trusting. You Just, are I, trusting that everything is perfect. And because you are trusting, you are acting as if it is, so it can be. Oh, it can be. Yes, that is the best. Thank you for that explanation, because that's why I know everything's going to be okay. And then It I always that. works out it when always. you allow it. Yes, yes. And so that is something that we need to look at. Remember, we are the creators. We are the permission gifters of our own lives. So if you are coming up against challenge, 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 struggle, 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 pain, 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 please take a moment to examine what permission structure you are laboring beneath. Is your permission structure, I only want to experience painful incidents because I am unhappy mm. with myself for some reason. If so, mm. clear that garbage. That is just old societal guilt that is not serving you. Mm -hmm. Or is your permission structure I made a mistake in the past. I don't deserve anything but pain. Clear that. That is not serving you. Allow your permission structure to be, I allow anything that is going to be in alignment with my highest good to come into my life. That way you're not saying, I know more than God. You're saying, Absolutely. whatever is for my highest good, I want to participate in 
so I can have the growth experience. Absolutely. And let me tell you, God loves you more than you could ever possibly love yourself mm -hmm. because they love with a different definition. There's no ego. So it is just, oh. Exactly. <laughs> There's no, well, you know, Absolutely. you've done that. I could have Absolutely. really loved you. So when you are being presented with challenges or opportunities to grow, it is based from love. It is not, you need to be punished because I love you your witch voice. <laughs> yeah. You weren't nice. Yeah. No, it is, oh, you're ready for more. I love you so much. I'm going to present it to you in the form that will be for your highest good. And if you were to allow it to be so, you will move through this with ease and grace Absolutely. and great joy. Absolutely. I want I want to end it right there. Move through it. Yes, absolutely. With great joy. My friend, I'm going to call my soul sister. <laughs> Amen. I am so glad to have you in my life. You are a light in the darkness. Yes. Thank you so much for being with us in this space and sharing your time with the listeners and myself on One Degree to Victory. I look forward. I hope this is not our last conversation. I have a feeling there will be many more to come and I will be seeing you and speaking with you soon. Thank you so much. It has been such a joy. Bye. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>